Hi YouTube, in this video I'll be trying to answer the questions in this Flat Earth meme. The questions are, how big is North America? What colour are the oceans and the land? Why is there never any real video of the Earth spinning, only stills? Why are the images so varied? I often hear Flat Earthers say, we are just asking questions, or there is nothing wrong with asking questions. Well that's true if you are genuinely interested in discovering the answers. The questions posed here can be answered with a little effort, and now with even less effort since all you have to do is watch this video. I will also be looking at these two images, which I have seen in some similar lineups. This is the first colour photograph of the whole Earth. It was taken on the 10th of November 1967 from ATS-3, a satellite in a geosynchronous orbit, 21,156 miles above the Earth. The satellite has served as a communications link for rescue operations including the 1985 Mexico City earthquake and the 1980 eruption of Mount St Helens. The image was taken using a device called the Spin Scan Camera. This used the spin of the satellite to scan a small strip of the Earth with each rotation. By tilting the camera slightly for the next rotation, a 1200 line image of the Earth could be created in about 20 minutes. In our lineup, this image is actually incorrectly labelled. It wasn't taken in 1975, but on the 16th of April 1972 by John Young, the commander of Apollo 16, when Apollo 16 was 15,700 miles from Earth. The camera was a handheld 70mm Hasselblad. This is the first image to be given the title of the Blue Marble. It's attributed to the entire crew of Apollo 17, although it was probably taken by Lunar Module pilot Jack Schmidt, when Apollo 17 was 28,000 miles from Earth. The Blue Marble is one of the most widely distributed photographic images in existence. The image is one of the first to show an almost fully illuminated Earth disk, as the astronauts had the sun behind them when they took the image. To the astronauts, the slightly gibbous Earth had the appearance and size of a glass marble, hence the name. The 1972 Tamil Nadu cyclone can be seen in the top right of the image. This storm had brought flooding and high winds to the Indian state of Tamil Nadu on December the 5th, two days earlier. A similar shot with a different exposure setting was taken just before the Blue Marble. This is the 1997 version of the Blue Marble. Described by NASA as a combination of science, engineering and artistry, the image was produced using data from three different satellite instruments and represents a virtual view of the Earth from 22,200 miles away. The image of the full disk Earth and its clouds was taken on September 9, 1997 by NOAA's GOES-8 satellite. The ocean data was collected in autumn 1997 by NASA's Sea Star satellite. The land colour is portrayed by a vegetation index calculated using data collected during September 1997 by NOAA's Polar Orbiting Environmental Satellites. These data are draped across an elevation model of Earth's topography from the US Geological Survey. The researchers chose to translate the digital data over land into a colour scheme where heavy vegetation is green and sparse vegetation is yellow. The heights of the mountains and the depths of the valleys have been exaggerated by 50 times their actual levels so that vertical relief is visible. The moon is an artistic addition. The lunar image was collected from a GOES satellite in September 1994 and has been magnified to about twice its relative size. The prominent storm raging off the west coast of North America is Hurricane Linda. In 2002 this new blue marble image was released. Much of the information contained in this image came from a single remote sensing device called MODIS, flying over 700 kilometres above the Earth on board the Terra satellite. The land and coastal ocean portions of these images are based on surface observations collected from summer 2001, combined every eight days to compensate for clouds that might block the sensor's view of the surface on any single day. This allows visualizers to create a seamless, very high resolution, true color mosaic of every square kilometer of our planet with no cloud cover, which is then draped over an elevation model of the Earth. The cloud image is a composite of two days of imagery collected in visible light wavelengths and a third day of thermal infrared imagery over the poles. Global city lights are derived from nine months of defense meteorological satellite observations superimposed on a darkened land surface map. This image shows Hurricane Dean arriving at the Yucatan. The clouds, including Hurricane Dean, were observed by NOAA's GOES-12 satellite on August 20, 2007. 
The land surface is a summertime image from NASA's Blue Marble Image Collection. The Blue Marble 2007 draws on data from multiple satellite missions, not all collected at the same time. It features layers of global data for everything from the land surface to the light reflected by the chlorophyll in the billions of microscopic plants that grow in the ocean. The land surface layer is based on photo light reflected sunlight observations measured by the MODIS instrument on NASA's Terra satellite in July 2004. The sea ice layer near the poles comes from the Terra MODIS observations of daytime sea ice observed between August and September 2001. The ocean layer is a composite. In shallow water areas, the layer shows surface reflections observed by Terra MODIS in July 2004. The open ocean is overlaid with observations of the average ocean chlorophyll content for 2004 from NASA's Aqua satellite. The cloud layer shows a single day snapshot of clouds observed by Terra Modis across the planet on July 29, 2001. City lights on Earth's night side are visualised from data collected by the Defence Meteorological Satellite Programme mission between 1994 and 1995. The topography layer is based on radar data collected by the Space Shuttle Endeavour during an 11-day mission in February of 2000. Topography over Antarctica comes from the Radarsat Antarctic Mapping Project version 2. Visualizers wrap these layers around a globe, set it against a black background and simulated the hazy edge of Earth's atmosphere. The 2012 Blue Marble is the one most people seem to have a problem with because the United States looks so large. This image was originally prepared by NASA oceanographer Norman Curing for a presentation at a meeting of the American Meteorological Society, where the requirement was to show the ocean chlorophyll levels around the USA. The data is from January the 4th, 2012, and was collected by the Suomi NPP satellite, which is in a polar orbit at an altitude of 517 miles. The image is stitched together from strips produced by the satellite, and the producer chose to focus the image in the northern hemisphere to eliminate the glint from sunlight. The Arctic region also wasn't included, as it is in darkness at this time of year. In the words of Norman Curing, who produced this image, I opted to use a near-sided perspective projection from an altitude of just over 2,100 kilometers. This projection results in a very wide-angle presentation such as one might get with a fisheye lens. Although this image was never supposed to be a true representation of the Earth, rather an interesting way to present data at a meeting, NASA presented it to the public with the blue marble name. Interestingly, views of the globe similar to this are entirely possible. Take a look at these three photographs of the same globe taken from different distances. As you can see, as we move away, we see more of the globe and consequently North America looks smaller, even though the globe is the same size in each image. This image was also produced by NASA oceanographer Norman Curing. The composite projection shows a dust storm using data from seven orbits of the Suomi NPP satellite on August 1, 2013. The milky lines running vertically across this image are caused by the reflection of sunlight off the ocean directly back at the sensor. Images like this help reveal wind patterns that steer plumes and clouds. At several points, dust stretch continuously from North Africa to South America. And now the last image in our collection, the Blue Marble 2015. This colour image of the Earth is from NASA's Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera, or EPIC, on the Deep Space Climate Observatory, or DISCOVER satellite, which is in a sun-synchronous orbit almost one million miles from Earth. The camera takes a series of ten images using different narrowband filters from ultraviolet to near-infrared to produce a variety of science products. The red, green and blue channel images are then combined to create a new photographic quality image every two hours. As we have seen, each of these images was produced at a different time using different imaging equipment with different processing methods. We should not expect them to look the same. Some are true photographs, others are visualisations of gathered data intended to be striking but not intended to be true photographic representations of the Earth. Full explanations of the production methods involved are provided by NASA, although sometimes you do have to do a little bit of digging around to find this. 
We should also remember that when some NASA researcher is playing around with cool ways to present the latest satellite data, the last thing on their mind is going to be how the image is likely to be perceived by a pack of anomaly hunting flat earthers who think NASA is the great Satan. The final question that needs to be answered is, why is there never any real video of the Earth spinning, only stills? I get the feeling that this question starts with a misconception. I know it's a common mantra in Flat Earth to say that the Earth spins at a thousand miles an hour, which of course sounds really fast. The Earth actually makes one revolution in 24 hours. That's half the speed of the hour hand on a clock. The question also makes a distinction between video and stills. Video is simply a series of stills, viewed in quick succession. Here in Europe, for video we commonly use 25 frames per second. In the USA, it's 30 frames per second. A games console typically runs at 60 frames per second. A pre-video cine camera would run at 12 frames per second. To record the rotation of the Earth at these rates would be completely pointless. Four minutes of video would show just one degree of the Earth's rotation and this would require 6,000 images. An entire day would require over 2 million images. Every one of us has experienced a YouTube video buffering, when for whatever reason the data required to formulate video just can't get to your computer fast enough. Efficiently transferring the vast quantities of data contained in 2 million images from way out in space in near real time would be a massive engineering challenge with no purpose other than to meet the unreasonable demands of flat earthers who have already rejected tens of thousands of images and thousands of hours of video from space as fake. The Japanese satellite Himawari 8 takes a high resolution image of the Earth every 10 minutes. As it's in a geocentric orbit, that is, always flying above and pointing at the Pacific Ocean, we don't see the Earth rotate, although we do see the arrival of night and day. NASA's Discover satellite is in a sun-synchronous orbit, so it is always facing the sunlit side of the Earth. It takes a picture every two hours, and when these are combined, they produce a video of our beautiful and very definitely spherical planet in motion. So what do you think? Have I answered the questions posed by the meme? Are my explanations sufficient? Thanks for watching, rate, comment and subscribe.